In this week's edition of Point Guard Point of View, as promised, March Madness. Um, I will tell you, I've been looking so forward to this for so long, like always. And before we could really settle in, that's when the craziness hit. And the craziness I'm speaking to for anyone who hasn't turned the television on in the last four or five days is the inequality that exists with the women and the men that are participating in March Madness for the men and the NCAA Women's Championship, I guess that's what it's called, I don't know. Uh, but it started with the weight room. Men had a nice weight room, weight room. women had two pieces of equipment. Um, it was swift how people got on board and exposed it. And then there was a quick fix and the NCAA was applauded for that. I won't go there. Uh, I will say this, let, let, let it be reported. It's been exposed. Uh, there's no excuse, and we're going to expect more uh, in the future and going forward. I just hope that the energy that the media had to get on this and expose it and report on it does not die down when this three-week period of March madness ends, right? Uh, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, it's Women's History Month, and this is what we're doing. You know, from the weights to the COVID testing. Look, for the trolls that want to talk about uh, money and how this is not Title IX because the NCAA doesn't get federal funds, I get that. But this is human life. Uh, so why the male life is more valuable than the female life, I don't get that. So that's one aspect of it. Think about that for a moment, okay? Why do they get better access to something that could be life altering, uh, and in some cases, life ending. That uh, another one, a, a friend of mine who's in the media, went to the NCAA website to pull some pictures, uh, trying to help promote the game. And that that first round, uh, the, the the first 16 games of the women tournament, he goes to the NCAA website to pull a picture, and nothing is there. Nothing. Um, I think Dawn Staley, and let me applaud this queen now. I know others have come out since then with strong statements and uh, what we should expect and how enough is enough, and I, I love that. I applaud Dawn for her consistent message of highlighting things, even while she's taking the hit, and even when it's not popular. Uh, when it's real, it just comes from within. You don't have to have someone write it up for you and make sure it's politically correct, because equality is correct. And it comes easy when you've been on the negative end of that. Um, there was something else I wanted to... Oh, look, someone texted me and said, you should boycott the men's game. I'm like, no, 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 no. The game has been great to a lot of us. Don't get it twisted, okay? I think the game evolves. I think uh, support surrounding the game hasn't. So I want to evolve as a coach, as a person, as a fan, and watch all the ball I can. So keep that in its lane. What we're talking about right now is an institution that should provide equality to athletes that are competing. But I will say this again, please media that jumped on this so fast, uh, keep that same energy when this three weeks in March and the first week in April is gone, uh, because that's, just, that's what we need. Like I'm excited that it was exposed and I'm excited that people are expecting more and pushing for more. And I think it's gonna be a beautiful thing now it's a little bit uh uncomfortable for many and and that's okay too right so i promise to shift oh i, I know what it was you know I, I mentioned this earlier i was immediately taken back to coach gunner fighting for equal per diem money for female athletes versus male athletes um during that little christmas break and one of the points that was made to her in defense of it was that, well, the gymnasts don't eat as much as the football players. And I'm like, yo, it's 2021. When I saw that picture, that's the first thing came to my head. And look, I've been gone from college basketball for 14 years, and I know there's been uh, progress, but this is also a reminder of how far we have to go. And so I'm gonna take that as a positive, and we can get a coordinated effort galvanize some people 
to spark change to where I'm not so excited this time because it's not whip around coverage, right? That should have been the case a long time ago. But here we are, uh, an opportunity to make a dent in that aspect of it. So with that being said, let me get to some basketball. Um, I'm excited because I want the storylines of these coaches, players, universities that made the decision to force forward during the pandemic and the parameters that they put in place, the care, uh, not just the basketball portion, but you know, from the testing, from the protocol, uh, just that commitment uh, to their mental health, all of those things, uh, an opportunity for this NCAA tournament to get to know the players beyond the court uh, so you can wrap your arms around their existence, not just the one time they're on TV, because then something resonates with you and then more fans of our game. Um, and I, I think another thing is, you know, they say, oh, it's not a lot of upsets in the women's game. Well, I'm late taping this because I couldn't stop watching basketball. And I know BYU took out Rutgers, an 11 and 6 seed. And then uh, Wright State just upended Arkansas. Uh, congrats, Katrina Merriweather. Go way back with her. Uh, and, 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 and here's the deal. It's not a boring game. It's fun. It's exciting. The skill set of these players, uh, their, their skill set, their mindset, uh, their mentality of team and oneness is something to be celebrated, is something to be uh, exposed, is something to celebrate. Uh, and and I'm, I'm happy for that. So just uh, make sure that we continue to, to, to keep the, the, the energy, to keep the uh, heat on places where it needs to be to close this gap of uh, inequalities, but also focus on those players. I know everyone's talking about Paige versus Caitlin, and that's fine too. Uh, they were talking about how certain networks um, lean towards uh, Paige and not Caitlin. I I'm gonna tell you this. It doesn't matter what I think about ESPN or commentators or whatever. I don't watch enough to know that, but I hear what people are saying. Here's what I know. That's some bad girls, right? Here's the next part. There's about 100 to 200 more of them, right? So let's let them get that exposure too so we can wrap our arms around all things that is good when it relates to this game that's been great to so many of us. So, uh, yeah, look, the madness will continue uh, with the in in inequities and the injustices but also to the upsets on the court, to the feel-good storylines, all those things. Let's celebrate that during this Women's History Month. And look, it's amazing what we can do when we all come together for the greater good. And that's what I'm looking forward to when this tournament is over, the positive change that it will uh, affect. Until the next time, Ciao.